water has filled the entire sports ground, including parts of the uh, Didsbury Golf Course uh, nearby. This is because the River Mersey uh, was at peak level. It did recede into the early hours, uh, and the Environment Agency have issued a warning of a possible threat to life. Of course, the water has receded a bit, but you can see, Liam, that the impact this is leaving on businesses, residents, uh, up to 430 properties were issued with the warning with a threat of evacuation. Didsbury Mosque has been taking people in and are still taking people in as we speak. I'm going to come out of the water. I've got wellies on, so I'm fine this is completely uninhabitable at the minute. The water goes right up to the front of Disbury Sports Ground. And if we turn round, you can see the driveway up to the sports ground. This fence is completely smashed in by the winds. At the moment, there's still a yellow warning of wind, which um, has actually come to an end at around about one o'clock today. So uh, just as your programme started, but you can see the aftermath. Uh, trees, which would have been hundreds of years old, blown into this fence and it's smashed up entirely, Liam. You can see that there's going to be a big over the next few days and weeks. Just up ahead, there's some of napped the damage, but certainly for the owners of Didsbury Sports Ground and, and the nearby golf course, there's going to be a lot of work to do over the next few weeks. Welcome to Donegal D. This is uh, a little uh, town and county down just on the Ards Peninsula in the east of the province. Although it was uh, in the west late last night, just past midnight, that the storm really hit, hit quite hard in Oma, Tyrone and Fermanagh. Uh, Oma, they've been having to use water pumps to keep the rivers from bursting their banks. Fermanagh's had uh, many trees down and apparently some landslides and dairy not of great significance, but nevertheless there. But the whole uh, storm's problem has created many, many problems, financial ones, for places like this. Uh, this is where the first Ulster Scots ever arrived in Ireland, and the first thing they did was build a bar. These places have been, uh, so it's the oldest bar in Ireland, and they depend on hospitality, they depend on tourism. And after a pandemic, when these places have been trying to market themselves with Airbnbs. Just down below us, the bar that we had our lunch in was, um, has six rooms above it for rent. And they're trying to get sort of more income in over the, week, over the weekends with locals rather than waiting for people from abroad to come here. And that storms like this are not helping them one bit. In a previous life, as a part-time basis, I used to do quite a lot of insurance assessment. And flood damage is one of the biggest problems and the most expensive you can have, even more than fire damage with the amount of raw sewage and all that can come into houses. So in the west of the province where there is some flooding and, and as you've just reported in Manchester, the insurance uh, premiums will most definitely go up, which will drive the price and the cost of the goods up in there because the price of insurance will go up every single time there's a claim. And every single time there's a claim, of course, those houses go into the at-risk category. So homeowners as well will definitely be feeling the pain. But the storm has all but passed us now. I, as I say, I'm looking out over the town of Donegate. It is idyllic. But I think the storm damage that will come uh, after this in the next few days and, of course, when they have to start repairing their homes themselves and waiting for the insurance to come through, as well as businesses, it causes problems for cash flow. And cash flow at this minute in time is the very veins and, and blood that runs through business in Northern Ireland and across the UK. Well, after Storm Eunice, 1.35 million people across the UK were left uh, without power today. That number is uh, thought to be 12,000 where I am, or 12,100 in the east and the southeast. So there are about uh, 8,000 actually engineers going out across the UK trying to reconnect uh, people. But let's just take a quick look actually at the damage. And if you're listening on radio, uh, I'll just describe to you what we're seeing here. And this just just goes to show what we can see actually in places inland, let alone in coastal areas. We've got a 100-year-old beech tree which has been blown over over the last few days and we can see here that, and if you're listening on radio, you'll be able to uh, understand the scale of these 
winds actually because it's been lifted up not just from the roots but actually from above the roots and it just goes to show how much damage that we have seen as a result of these storms today we had that uh, yellow warning for wind as well more building damage transport delays I've actually just had a look at the National Rail website and there are 26 rail operators across the UK that are having problems still it's having a huge effect uh, across the UK still. But let's just take a look, actually, Liam, at the UK power networks because they are actually giving extra finance to people in the east and southeast who have been affected. So we have uh, eligibility to receive £50 after 24 hours without electricity. This wasn't here uh, yesterday. This is new money they've brought in this morning. Of course, your show is on the money, so let's talk about that. They say an additional £70 they're giving out as well when you reach 48 hours without electricity and an additional £70 thereafter for every 12 hours without power.